There you go. Now, while many of us spent Christmas with friends and family, eating too much and opening prezzies, polar explorer Ben Saunders was attempting to become the first person to cross Antarctica alone. 51 days in, ferocious weather conditions meant that he was left without enough food and he was forced to abandon his attempt. Breakfast John Maguire has been taking a look back at his journey. In the long, brutal and all too often tragic history of polar exploration and endurance, skiing across Antarctica entirely alone remains unachieved. Despite the months and years of planning, the treacherous conditions of the South Pole always provide the greatest obstacle. His friend, Henry Worsley, had died attempting the same feat just a year before. Ben had given himself 65 days to cross the frozen continent, skiing via the pole for more than 1,000 miles. We spoke to him on Christmas Day. It's been pretty hard and the weather's been unusually bad. There's been a lot of um, low cloud and fog and mist. Four days later, Ben reached the South Pole. But ahead lay more than 350 miles, a distance too dangerous to attempt, considering his remaining food and supplies would only last two weeks. So more than 100 years since Amundsen beat Scott to the South Pole, and despite a century of innovation and determination, this ultimate polar challenge remains unsurmounted. John Maguire, BBC News. It's quite a story. We can now speak to Ben. In his first TV interview since arriving back on Monday, he joins us with his fiancée, Pip, from their home in Richmond. Uh, guys, thank you so much for coming on and, and telling us about uh, what happened and what the last few days have been like. Uh, ben, um, let's start with you, if we can. I mean, you've, you've had a few days to sort of think about what happened and, and what you weren't able to do. How do you look back on that expedition now? Yeah, morning. Um, I, it's quite surreal being being back home in in the comfort of my, of my living room for sure. Um, I think looking back, I, I've got um, no regrets at all um, uh, about calling it a day when I when I did. Um, I thought actually I'd come home feeling more more sad that I hadn't made it all the cross, but um, just happy to be back at the moment and um, and happy with with getting as far as I did in, in some really tough uh, conditions. Oh, Pip, you must be absolutely over the moon to have him back safe. Um, just talk us through, yeah, that, that, and, and how it was, you know, knowing he was out there. <laughs> look at you, you look so pleased. <laughs> no, um, it was great that I could speak to him every day. It definitely made it easier for me. I'm not sure if it made it easier for Ben, though. Um, I think the really difficult bit was when he was trying to make the decision as to whether to stop or not, and that was quite emotional, and then... Um, when he made the call, it was a oh, huge sigh of relief and really pleased to have him home. Well, it's great to see the smiles on both your faces. But, because, Ben, when, you, when you're there, I wonder how long that decision to stop actually takes. Because, obviously, you've got food supplies, but as the journey is taking you longer and longer, those food supplies are running out. So how difficult a decision was that finally to say, right, do you know what, I, I can't actually go on any longer safely? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It was, um, you know, there, there was a sort of equation going on for the entire expedition. I've got a finite amount of food in, in, in the sledge, a finite amount of fuel for the, for the stove so I can melt uh, snow to get drinking water. So it was something that, that had been um, kind of weighing on my mind for a while. The conditions were, were, were definitely worse than I was expecting for, for a large part of the journey. So um, uh, it, was, it was something really that happened. The decision was made over, over several days. So I'd been weighing it up for a long time and, um, and, and had had nothing but support really from, from friends and family and people in the polar world. So, so, so no regrets now, but it was something that took a while to, um, to decide on for sure. And just remind us um, a little bit about why you chose to make this journey um, in many ways. It was due, down to a very close friend of yours, wasn't it? Yes, it was um, exactly the same, uh, the same route, well, certainly the same route to the pole, um, attempted by a friend of mine called Henry Worsley two years ago. Um, Henry, is, as you know, passed away at the very end of that expedition. Um, the journey remained unfinished, and I felt after a while that, that it might be a nice way to, uh, you know, to, to, to honour him, the, uh, you know, the inspiration, the friendship that he, he gave me, um, by not only trying to finish the journey, but also supporting the same charity, the Endeavour Fund. And, and Pip, from your perspective, I, I wonder what sort of conflict you're going through, because obviously you're, you're speaking to Ben, as you mentioned, on the satellite phone every day. It's part of you thinking, I know what you're going through, I know why you're doing it and why you want to achieve it, but then the other part is saying, just come home with you. <laughs> 
Yeah, before he went, you know, talking about he's off on this expedition, I'm like, okay, off you go. And then when he's out there, I'm just, what are you, just madness. <laughs> don't quite understand, but, um, you know, it's what he does. I'm, when I met him, I knew that's what he did, so just just supporting him, actually. I, you know, I said, carry on if you can, but um, quite glad he can to come home. <laughs> sure. Um, ben, so what will, what will happen to this journey now? Do you think, I mean, I'd hardly dare ask you, really, with, with Pip sitting there next to you. Clearly <laughs> delighted to have you back. Um, will, you, will you plan to go again? Have you not had this conversation? Yeah, at, at the moment, no, no plans to go back. And I've been telling everyone that I'm, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I've, I've been doing these big expeditions for 17 years now. I've, I've scratched that itch. I'm, I, no, no desire to get back in a sledge harness and, and, and suffer like that again. But, of course, I said that in, in, you know, this time two years ago. Or, no, sorry, four years ago when I came back from Antarctica uh, 2014. So, so uh, I, I, difficult. I, I mean, never say never, but I, I definitely, at the moment, I feel very content with getting as far as I did and with, and with um, you know, the achievements I've made in my, in my career um, of leading these, these big expeditions. So you've been in, in Antarctica. Pip, have you got a sort of really dull family holiday ban, uh, planned this year to, to, to try and fill some time and do something a little bit more normal? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, but we're going away somewhere next week, and I, as long as it's not in a tent, I'll be happy. <laughs> um, and then just before we go, I mean, you have been to uh, extraordinary places, um, and it must be, just give us a sense of what it's like being there. Imagine it is intensely beautiful. Uh, it, it is. It, it, it seems to be um, either either horrendously tough or indescribably beautiful, and, and there's very little in between, so enormous highs and lows. Um, I feel enormously privileged to have spent as, as, as much time as I have in the polar regions and it's very difficult to explain the the sort of scale and, and the majesty of these places Antarctica is enormous you know twice the size of Australia pretty much it, it's a vast place uh, and and a absolutely stunning when, when the when the weather's good <laughs> a lot a lot of bad weather a lot of days of sort of fog and cloud where I hardly saw anything but um, it is uh, it's a magical place and, and I, I fear therefore there's something addictive about it as well so uh, I, I I'm sure I'll be back there at some point but perhaps not dragging a sledge for for hundreds of miles again Okay, and look at the smile on Pip's face when she hears that. Thank you very much for, for talking to us and, and glad to see you back safely as well. Have a great holiday next week as well, guys. Yeah, thank you both very much indeed. That ties in, doesn't it, with what we were talking about um, earlier on? And about, we were talking about a little bit about the sort of experience of nature and the effect yeah. that has on your brain and your body. And, and the fact we were saying that uh, the new research is saying once, you've, once you're outside and you even see some trees and some birds and some flowers, it actually stays with you for sort of seven hours, doesn't it? It can benefit for you seven mm. hours later. And more on that later. And also, let's find out actually what the weather is like here. Carol has all the details. Very good morning again, Carol. Good morning both. Good morning to you too.